Welcome to the SBP Podcast, the voice of mobile film. This is episode 52, and I'm your host, Susie Voltella. We recorded our podcast at an event in San Diego that one of our guests was a part of. Now, one thing, I just have to share this with you. One thing that I enjoy about doing what I do on a local level is that um, we have a community here in San Diego who are very supportive of what we're doing with regards to giving a platform to people who are making films using smartphones. And that actually includes you, our listeners. Um, so while we were setting up for our podcast in this episode with our guests, who are Tracy and Chris, um, they're actually representing sponsors for this year's International Mobile Film Festival. And those sponsors are Star Wars Steampunk Universe. But while we were setting up, guess who made an appearance? Well, you're going to hear our brand ambassador, who is also sponsoring the film festival this year, Aaron Nabus. Aaron is part of the, uh, actually co-founder of the Hall H Show podcast, and his partner, Alex Benedicto, um, did not ap make an appearance uh, while we were setting up. However, we did want to mention his name and give them both a uh, thank you for sponsoring the film festival this year. But I guess you could say that Aaron actually crashed our party in this episode. <laughs> but it was a welcome crash. <laughs> um, anyway, back to to what I originally wanted to tell you was that this episode shares a really great story behind the celebrity charity group of cosplayers in Southern California. There are uh, moments which will touch your heart when it comes to their work with children in hospitals. But there are also moments with a few thrills and excitement and their history and insights about the cosplay franchise and Star Wars. Actually, George Lucas is mentioned a few times. And there are moments where, well, we get, <laughs> we get really dorky. What can I say? Um, definitely this episode is going to take you all for a ride. Uh, but listen to their advice for cop cosplayers who make films or to make films using smartphones and why they are going to be a part of our film festival for the third year, turning our red carpet experience with mobile filmmakers into an extravaganza. So let's go and let's have some fun with our, well, what can I say? They're one of the funnest sponsors that we have. Star Wars Steampunk Universe. Hey everybody, welcome to the SBP podcast, The Voice of Mobile Film. I am here surrounded by stars, actually. Um, or, or should I say NASA outfits? <laughs> I am here with uh, the Star Wars Steampunk Universe group. Well, the two leading members. Is that correct to say? Uh, two members. Two members? Okay. Two of the founding members. Two of the founding there members. There are several. Okay. So um, I'm here with um, <laughs> Hot Nerd Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets easier to say, <laughs> especially for me for some reason. And uh, and dude, Vader. Yay! Yay! Happy to be here. Yes, and we have our paparazzi with us here. Um, uh, Aaron Nabus, our brand sponsor slash um, sponsor slash. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Naboos, um, have you been to Naboo? Have you been to Naboo? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because I'm here with Dude Vader and uh, Tracy, hot nerd girl, I'm actually probably the biggest part of my dorkness is going to come out out of the universe of dorkstum. Is that what it's called? Dorkdom. Dorkdom. Nerddom. Nerddom. Dorkdom. Geekdom. Geekdom. Mmm. Dudedom. Mm. Mm. 
Mobile Girl, dumb. Call me a dumb dude. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> hey, dude. You get that a lot. I get too much. Of um. It. So, anyways, by the way, the reason we're speaking with these guys is because they're sponsoring our film festival. But um, as some of our followers. Um, hopefully some of your followers, otherwise you've probably turned off the podcast by now. <laughs> um, but uh, they are stars on our red carpet, or actually they escort the stars, the filmmakers. Um, we've actually renamed, I don't know if I had a chance to tell you this, but we've renamed the red carpet the Red Carpet Extravaganza Ooh. because of you guys. Fancy. Well, you are regulars, and um, and I love you guys. What can I say? There, everybody in the public now heard that, so. <laughs> we love you, too. <laughs> um, so besides getting really corny here, um, I wanted to, uh, t- I think they have a really good story about how Star Wars steampunk came to be before we connect this to our mobile film festival i'd like for you guys to talk about that being the the founding members well chris this is more of a you story yeah uh nathan seekerman <coughs> one of our other main founders and i were on the queen mary at a steampunk event and i had just started dude vader because i was hounded by friends not doing costuming for comic-con and I only had a helmet and a Hawaiian shirt. And over dinner, I thought, why don't we expand this into something more than just two guys hanging out? And so at that dinner, we came up with the idea for Star Wars Steampunk Universe. Uh, Nathan had just finished some photo shoots and with Kansas Johnson and said... Let's all meet at the train, the antique train station. Let's do a shoot. I contacted Lucasfilm because Star Wars Celebration Anaheim was starting. And, and that's an easy guy to just contact, isn't it? Well, the I'll panel just give was, him a text, send him a text. Real quick. I've got a <laughs> little background in the industry. <laughs> and uh, we did a panel. And off of the Tracy photo shoot, we had... Uh, our first Wait, appearance. The, uh, the Tracy photo shoot. I, I wasn't, call it Tracy. Fo- oh, no, no. You were I, I, w- I wasn't Kansas in. Johnson's yeah. photo shoot. I, they, they, they hunted me down at a con and asked me if I would be a part of it. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just send me the information. Just send me the information. And for some reason, I couldn't make it to the photo shoot. But we got photos of you at another location. My bedroom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember the one with the big steam wheel. Oh, that was after the panel, though. Right, and so we in did your the bedroom. You have a did, big steam no, wheel. We, yeah. <laughs> no, we did the we, we did the panel at Star Wars at, um, Star Wars Celebration, uh-huh. and that was where Pete, right, found us. Pete Vilmer, who it was head of fan relationships at the time. Oh, okay. And he was this guy in a plaid shirt, just wanting to hang out with us. Didn't really introduce who he was. Just said, if you guys ever do stuff. You know, can I get the shots? And we were ended up in the next issue of Star Wars Insider Magazine. That was our first magazine publication. So that was a pretty spectacular start. How, how long ago was this? This was the... Um, Three years ago? Four years ago. Four years ago? Yeah, 2015. Ooh. And by the time the next Comic-Con hit, we developed into a group. And in our first group uh, appearance at Comic-Con, we ended up getting Best Costume Group from the Hollywood Costume Designers Guild. The Starburner? No, the Hollywood Designers Guild. Right, but isn't the award called the Starburner? No, 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 uh, never mind, Starburner is a different, (laughs) we've we've gotten that award. Uh, Several of our members get this uh, steampunk award called the Starburner's Award. And so several of, Nathan was the first one to receive it the year before I met him. Mm. And then I received it for public service the next year. And uh, since then, uh, six of our members have received the best costume at Comic-Con for Starburner. But it was the Hollywood Designers Guild that really put us on the map. By and that was in 2016, the yes. following year? Yeah. That that's, the, that's where I met uh, our, our guy here, our friend ambassador. <laughs> 
at the because that was the first year that I did a a panel, you know, at Comic Con, and I remember seeing you guys there, but I didn't know you because um, Aaron is the one that connected us for the. Um, for well, the 2017, you had asked me if I knew any cosplayers, and actually, the first person I thought of was was Tracy. Yeah. So. And I had met you at the uh, at Tony's parties. Yeah, the right? uh, yeah the uh, game of bloggers. Game, game of bloggers, yes. Tony Kim, who does the uh, Crazy for Comic Con uh, website, and also Hero all that. Within, which I'm wearing one of his uh, Wonder Woman denim jackets. Oh, yeah, the Hero Within clothing. That is really taken off. I love that jacket. I didn't even realize you were wearing that jacket. Let me see. Turn around. Model. Cop. Catwalk. Catwalk. Ooh. Hot. <laughs> it looks good on you. <laughs> From it the back. Sharp <laughs> He's, um, the, the, the Batman jacket really went, went viral. Of that, the Hero that's Within. actually how this whole thing came out, because I wanted, um, so for our listeners, <laughs> yes, you are part of this, <laughs> Um, basically, what happened was I was I, I called Aaron. This is right after I was in your podcast, and we were starting. Well, after that podcast, he knew everything about, about uh, you know the film festival. I shared that whole story for like what three hours or something. It was crazy. The Hall H. Yes. Yes. Hall yes. H. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I said, hey, Aaron, you know what? I had this idea that, um, you know, we, we go to have the award ceremony and I'm, I'm up on the, you know, stage or whatever and I'm saying, you know, oh, welcome to, you know, for the awards. And unfortunately, I forgot the awards at home on my way down. So um, we're not going to be able to give everybody the awards and then Batman would show up from the back like the true hero saying, no worries, I got your awards, you know, and he would come in and, and that would be a way to get a, a cosplayer, you know, superhero type thing uh, to be a part, just to make it fun. And, um, and he said, well, I mean, you know, I know this other group. I know, you know, somebody who does the Star Wars. And when he said Star Wars, I was like, oh, my God. And then he said steampunk, and, they, and I saw your photos. And I was like, this is, like, so cool. Um, and for our listeners, we have photos on our website and stuff, but we're going to share some photos of theirs too in their costumes because they're really unique and they share your stories right because each one of you is a character and there's a story behind each character right right and one of the beauties of the steampunk version being embraced by lucas and disney all other costume groups have to have what's called camera ready outfits to where all the cosplayers attempt to make their outfits to look exactly 100% as though it was came from the movie. That's cool. Lucas and Disney encourage us to go in the opposite direction, to play steampunk it up and have a lot of fun with it. So it's for us, it's, I think, more playful creatively because we're allowed to go outside the arena. Yeah. We can update, change our costumes however much we want, and we don't have to worry about it at all. We don't have to worry if there's a, a blaster burn in the right spot, and we can just change it up. And I've I've completely changed my costume at least three times. And I I mean, Chris, every single time he walks out the door, he's got something different with his Dude Vader costume. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, Dude Vader's all over 300 versions right now, with the different. I've got 50 different Hawaiian shirts. I now make 3D crest on the helmet for every event I go to, be it a charity or, or today at the NAT with the NASA theme. And you're doing this thing lately, uh, not because I follow you, <laughs> uh, but you're doing this thing lately with the uh, samurai sword uh, lightsaber combination. Yes, Dude yeah. Vader, uh, the uh, Bandai toy company had approached me about uh, would I consider ma making my outfit move more in a samurai direction and they would provide the outfit and I could paint it up however I want. So the he this is the fourth version of the helmet. The first version was auctioned off for to help Rancho Obi-Wan uh, mm -hmm. last year. The next version is going to be at the Comic-Con Museum there. Uh, one version will go to the Lucas Museum in Los Angeles, and then this one now. And with a 3D printer, if I knew a new helmet, 
now I can just That's 600 so awesome. hours later redesign yeah. a new helmet. <laughs> is your most recent one 100% 3D printed? Yeah. Wow. It's all 3D printed. Because it started off as being like a costume beater helmet, right? That you right. just modified? The first one that I got was the kid's toy helmet uh, that I found the toy head at Col Colby's Swap Meet to where when at the end of every day my skin was raw from the helmet being so tight oh. to my face. Oh, my face. gosh. His nose would bleed. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. And Tracy, I'd pull it off and Tracy would be reaching for Band-Aids. That's you know? like total dedication there. Yes. We suffer um, for our art. Yes. Oh gosh. <laughs> so it's 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 very fun, and to give you an idea of how much they encourage us to be uh, whimsical. Yeah. Uh, last May was the first time costumer uh, uh, costumers were uh, invited to be in a Disneyland parade that weren't professionals, and so they had a hundred a hundred and thirty costumers, and from the uh, 501st, which is the greatest group out there for charity work, Man uh, the Mercs, the Mandalorians, uh, the Rebel Legion, and Dude Vader. Mm. And so before the parade, they gave this big lecture, okay, we know you want to march in line and very military and the whole thing. Mm. And then after they gave that big lecture to the hall, mm. the guy walks over to me and he says, okay, Dude Vader, we're putting you at the end of the parade about 20 feet behind everybody else to where they can't see you. Wow. And you do whatever you damn well please. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just mugged it up. And five days later, we repeated the event. And he says, you need to g be goofier. <laughs> what is your character, Tracy? Mine is, uh, so it started off as being um, a version of New Hope Leia. And that was for the um, the celebration in 2015. Well, because they had done the photo shoot ahead of time, they had never planned on being a group thing, anything beyond celebration. Mm -hmm. So when Pete Vilmer approached Chris and Nathan Seekerman and said, hey, you know, what do you think about making this into a group? Well, by then we had um, a beautiful cosplayer named Raina who had done um, a version of Slave Leia for the photo shoot. So I was like, okay, we're going to do another photo shoot here. We need more characters, and we need to not have two Leias. <laughs> so on the fly, Kansas Johnson, who's the photographer who really created the aesthetic for Star Wars Steampunk Universe, mm -hmm. she pulled out a lipstick, and she said, hold on, we're going to make you in... Because oh, there was also very briefly a girl who was doing Queen Amidala. And so she said, we're going to make you Sabe, who is Queen Amidala's uh, bodyguard, body double. Um, most people would probably recognize her. As, I think she was Kira Knightley. In, it was like Kira Knightley's break oh, cool. into movies. Um, God. Natalie Portman was in high school at the time. <laughs> like, it's like, it so long ago. It doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Well, um, Star Wars lasted like our entire life. I so. know, I know. And so she, she put a couple dots on my cheeks and put a little bit of lipstick on my bottom lip. And she said, ta-da, you're Sabe. And she's like, Sabe's rocket. Huh. And so from there on, um, that's what I was. And that was, the, that was the day, the picture that was in Star Wars uh, Insider Magazine. And then um, after that, it became clear that I was just going to keep getting mistaken for New Hope Leia. So um, I kind of took one of Natalie Portman's Queen Amidala. Because, you know, Sabe in the movies, she just dresses like Queen Amidala. So I could kind of pick any Queen Amidala costume I wanted to. And I chose the one that I felt was the most steampunkable. Because um, there are some really beautiful Queen Amidala cosplayers out there who do things that are very true to the movies, and they, that is way beyond my level of expertise when it comes to any kind of sewing or crafting. So, um, so I picked a, again a costume. It, it, most people know it as the fireplace scene with, when her breasts are heaving, um, <laughs> and I took that costume and kind of steampunked it up. And uh, so, yeah. So my character is Sabe Sprocket. Nice. But most people just think of me as being like a Jedi because I carry a lightsaber because I want to. And where did the hot nerd girl come in? Oh gosh! So I've been doing <laughs> I've been doing hot nerd girl since 2010. Believe it or not, it's been almost 10 years. Wow! And I was going to conventions long before that. I'm I'm older than I look. We don't need to. We can, we'll we're move past that. I don't know why I even said that. You can cut that part out. But um, we're gonna. No, we're not cutting anything out. <laughs> we're about to get a scoop. <laughs> so um, it started off actually as an inside joke. Um, 
I was writing a, a, a completely unrelated blog and for a specific event in my life. That event came to an end, and I wanted to keep writing. I'd been a lifelong writer. And a friend of mine, I put it out there on Facebook. I said, hey, this event is over, but I want to keep writing. What should I rename this blog? And my friend Darcy, who did the HNG podcast with me and has done several HNG stuff with things with me, he's been a good friend of mine since college. He said, well, you are constantly bombarding us with your nerdy crap. Because I would just email. I would email every single person in my contact list every Star Trek article that I could find. I don't know why. And I was painfully, painfully shy for much of my life. And so in college, I would, I would run down the hallways and people didn't even necessarily know my name or if they knew my name, they knew only my first name. And so it was kind of a joke that I was that hot nerd girl that would just <laughs> run down because everybody just knew I liked Star Trek. That was all I knew about me. And so, um, so he messaged me and he said, I saw your post. You're going to do it about nerdy stuff. It's going to be called Hot Nerd Girl. And I said, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. My life shut up. And he said, no, 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 no. Trust me. He said, You're only your family and friends are ever going to pay attention to it. So just do it. And I said, no, we need to come up with another name. we got to take the hot out of there because that's not my personality at all. And he was, like, he was like, no, no, no. It's funny. It's a joke. Like, it's what we used to call you. And finally I said, you're right. Only my family and friends are ever going to see us. They're going to think it's funny. <laughs> and then the next thing I know, I posted a meme that went crazy viral and I had like 10,000 followers. Wow. And then like two weeks later I had 20,000 followers. And then like a month after that it was up to like 40,000. Like it just kept spiraling. Yeah. And then Facebook changed a bunch of algorithms and now it's kind of, you know, it's grown much slower since then. But, yeah. you know, it's kind of kind of hovering around like 70,000 since no, then. No, that's that's still pretty freaking awesome but, for, you know, Facebook. <laughs> well, and considering that I pretty much just post whatever I want, and you can either le take it or leave it. You can come along. I'm, I'm posting what I want to post. You can come along for the ride or not. Like, I'm not catering to anybody right. at all. So, you know, it's 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 fun until, you know, there's days when it's not. There's days when have your own people are in a mood. <laughs> toys, you know, Hot Nerd Girl and Dude Vader. And why don't you um, name every one of the, if you can, Ooh. that's a lot of... Um, cosplayers in your group but maybe you can name each character if you don't mind oh maybe gosh. you can go there's well, a lot that nathan, come in and out yeah nathan is well uh, how about the current ones okay han solo secretman is nathan secretman uh we have um tracy who is a c3po character. tracy davis oh. and um the um We've are people a, allowed a, to know your name, your real name? I mean, your. Well, they know uh, Tracy, yeah. Tracy, just yeah, no I last name. If I'm at a con or at a charity performance, I never uh, allow myself to be seen without the helmet. This is a yeah. thing that I learned from Nathan, and it really is wonderful for the kids because um, the the fantasy uh, like becomes Disneyland. very real. You're true to your brand yeah. that way. Yeah. That's so cool. it's, uh, um, and and it's embarrassing at times because you, I'll meet a, a wonderful lady and I won't be able to <laughs> chat her up because it's Dude Vader. You know, it's just, just nice meeting you. And, uh, you know, here's my card. To, oh, thank you. And that's the <laughs> end of it, you know. So that's kind of fun. The, um, the fun part also with the uh, the outfits being that identifiable when we are a group and we really encourage cosplayers to start forming up groups because that's when you get the major attention by the media and the and the public um, you show up to an event and they just flock to you and the kids know dude Vader and they know uh, you know uh, solo secretman uh, Nathan's a, uh, a little bit shy about it. It broke his heart Aww. when Hans. We were sitting at the world premiere Aww. in the theater. He was sitting right next to me. And when Han Solo died, he cried. I mean, just I've never seen Nathan cry in my life. You I think we. I think. I mean, honestly, we were because we all kind of got split up a little bit. But the two of us ended up, I, I think we were actually like a few seats apart. And when it became clear that we knew each other, the people between us moved. And we got to sit next to each other. And I mean, just, I mean, 
the buildup was such that we were we started crying even before it happened and they kind of did a thing they were in so it was between three different theaters right there on hollywood boulevard and i think they were actually in the el capi were they in we kodak were, or we were all in the chinese we were in chinese but I, yeah. but they but the, oh, the but george lucas and, the and everybody yeah. george lucas and everybody i think where, where they were actually coming on stage were they at kodak or el capitan el capitan so but they were playing it live <coughs> in our theater as well mm. And so there was this kind of there's kind of build up and you know they kind of like pointed to George Lucas in the audience and gave him props you know Catherine Kathleen Kennedy came out and you know and then it was like okay we're going to start the movie now and by then we'd been I mean we you you have to understand too like we were in the freezing cold and I don't think anybody anticipated that it would be that cold and you know we're watching all of these people that we grew up watching no matter what age we were and we're everywhere from Chris, is, Chris to um, to Noah, who I think was like twelve at the time, right? And mm-hmm. so, and we're all just shaking. We're like bonding with each other while also watching Carrie Fisher, you know. And it's, I, I think it was her last Star Wars. It wasn't it her last Star Wars premiere because she, I think she passed away before Last Jedi actually came out. Right. So oh, we're watching right. all of them come, you know, and it's their first movie in all these years, and. So our emotions were already really, really high in our anticipation. And so by the time the theater went dark, just waiting for that, you know, that, like we were like, we were already crying, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. Like, yeah. And then when, of course, when Han Solo, I don't, spoiler. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. It's, so. it's been a while. So if you right. haven't seen Star Wars, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was very, it was very emotional. And I, th- I, I cried several times during that i'm getting a lump in my throat yeah. just thinking about it was, it it was a hard moment for a lot of us because the we had invested in our characters so much we weren't copying cus- characters we were an alternative universe yeah so all of us had a deep commitment into our back a connections stories. right yeah. and oh, so yeah. that's why it was hardest on nathan because here was the only person who's in our consciousness dies and that and that's one of those real tough issues you know the um and i i come across this a lot in the cosplayers that are uh screen specific they are absolutely um identified with those individuals yeah if you go to a con a stormtrooper won't just casually talk to you yeah they're very much into their character the entire con. That's and true with a lot of cosplayers, though, that um, most of them, for the most part, they, they're they not just playing the part when they're getting behind the photo or when they're acting it out or whatever. They're, they stay true to their character for the entire time. For our listeners, we happen to be sitting right practically in front of this ice machine. We're right. at the hotel where the <laughs> San Diego Comic Fest is. Cocktails, anybody? <laughs> yeah. One of the things that <coughs> we have when we bring new people into the group, yeah. one of the big thresholds for them to pass over is the fact that the vast majority of what we do is charity work. I want to talk about that. And there's a big transference that occurs instead of being in costume and being about yourself and posing for photographers now you're in costume for the charity person and it is a major life changing event for people and it's wonderful to watch that catharsis when it happens when a cosplayer turns into somebody instead of playing a hero you become the hero it's totally there's on on twitter on sean's twitter timeline i think it was there was a a little video of batman coming down the hall for the little kid that was sick and he goes to hug him and i cried (laughs) oh yeah well i I mean and it was a few seconds star wars steampunk universe would not move have moved beyond celebration if it was not for the fact that all of us felt very passionately about charity work and all of us were doing our own thing already. You know, Chris, you know, Chris 
was doing all kinds of events just on his own. Um, you know, Nathan was doing a lot of stuff with the Sol Salvation Army. I was doing a lot of stuff with Operation Gratitude. So we all felt very passionately about it. You know, Kansas, I mean, she was do working, doing stuff with um, children with autism because both of her children were Great. highly autistic that she worked with for years and years and years to make them, you know, get them high functioning. And her kids are amazing, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, we all have felt very passionately about this. And we all do crossover stuff with other charity groups as well. So it's, you know, it's something that we all believe in a lot. And I would, I mean, I would see these guys, if, we, if it hadn't been for that aspect of our personalities, I'd be seeing this guy, these guys at cons and hugging them and whatever, but we wouldn't have maintained this Star Wars theme punk universe for the past four years had not been for that. And I think that is our uh, number one recognition as far as the public is concerned. Yeah. You know, the, um, the identification that the, we are a charity group not a cosplay group. And there's now wonderful cosplay charity groups uh, springing up all over the country. There's a major one in Florida, you know, yeah. Cosplayers for Charity. And well, what but it, the 501st is the first group that ever really started doing this It's an this amazing in a major concept. Way. I mean, for, you know, there's the Make-A-Wish, you know, and something like that, that, y you know, you would go, you know, I want to be... Batman, or I want to meet Superman, or something like that. And how would they be able to provide something like that without people like you guys? You but know? there can also be a funny moment. Uh, one kid wanted to meet uh, Stan Lee. Mm. And so I was making the presentation as Dude Bader, and this kid was thoroughly convinced it was actually Stan Lee inside the outfit Aww. that was going to pull the helmet off. <laughs> and, you know, I had the certificate. I had a drawing that I'd done of Stan Lee that I gave to this young kid. And he was saying, okay, Mr. Lee, okay, okay, uh, enough of that. Can Aww. you just take off your helmet? <laughs> and it was, it was really magical because... He realized, no, it wasn't Stan Lee, but he was going to Stan Lee's birthday celebration. That, was the, that was the gift. And so um, for me, it's, the helmet is the safeguard because when it gets real emotional in charity situations, the kid never knows Dude Bader is crying like a baby inside. And one of the things with I, I cheer for the cosplayers that are open face because for them to be able to hold character in these tough visits is just wonderful. I got to make a shout out. Uh, Sean Richter is like the number one guy in San Diego for this. I mean, this guy just shows up to everything. And he is the most um, uh, amiable and giving person when you go to an event. Speaking of Sean Richter, today is his birthday, so happy birthday, Sean. It is. Happy he birthday, Sean. I was going to wait for him to finish to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he's, yeah. part, I mean, and he's part of a team that includes yeah. Sean Mullins and, um, and Shane Hawley and Colleen Archer Rodriguez. And, you know, I think between, between this group of people, a lot of charity work gets done, especially in Southern California. Yeah, the Sci-Fi Coalition has really become the charity group for San Diego. We're sort of a, a group that works in LA and works in San Diego, and we're Star Wars specific. But Sci-Fi Coalition, they do every version of cosplay you can think of. If they need an event that's only Marvel or only DC or only Star Wars, uh, they're able to provide the characters. And speaking of being behind a mask, it, when, I mean, when I'm in Star Wars steampunk, I have no mask. Mm -hmm. And it is, it, it, it is harder because when I do a lot of sci-fi coalition stuff, I'm doing Batgirl. And even though my eyes are exposed, being behind that mask somehow makes it a little easier when it comes to, especially kids, you know, I almost always do Batgirl when I do hospital visit. And being behind that mask and, and being able to um, have that character to lean back on is what gets me through that. And almost always I'll go back to my car and I'll just start crying <laughs> because well, I wanted, it's hard. I wanted to share something with you guys. So I had to interview children who had lost their father to a drunk driving accident. Um, not him, but somebody else who, you know, was on the wrong way on the, on the 15. And um, I was interviewing these kids and, and a mom, and they started 
crying while during the interview. It was really, really tough for them. And a lot of people don't realize how tough it is for the person on the other side, too. But you're talking about being behind the mask. Being behind the camera also has a little bit of a shield as well. Uh, but probably a l maybe even more so because you're concentrating on the, you know, on the technical aspect of what you're recording. And so it, it lets you disconnect from that a little bit, you know, also. But I couldn't imagine, you know, you know, doing doing what you guys do. And you were saying earlier, you you've done like a hundred, and we're, it's March, right? No, no, I do a hundred, I mean, about a hundred events a year. Yeah. And it's, eighty of those are charity. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's uh, the. Um, but the thing is, is that the energy it takes to do it comes from the people that you're visiting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you may feel like, oh, God, I, I don't know if I feel, what shirt should I wear, what outfit, sh uh, what version today. But I'll tell you, as soon as you walk through the door of the hospital, the care center, you walk onto the field of a 5K race, um, suddenly you've got all, you're a teenager again. You've got all of the energy in the universe. Um, the, uh, and... The first kid that just yells out your name from across uh, Liberty Station Field, yeah. you know, it, 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 it just goes to the core of who you are. That, you know, when a kid yells out, dude, Vader, it, it, I can't be happier. That's awesome. It's weird. It is weird. It's like your adrenaline kicks in and you're just, you, you are this ball of energy. And then the second it all ends, you just collapse into a heap. Because <laughs> it's passion. Passion gives people energy, and people are, and and it goes outside of you. It, it it extends to the people that are around you as well. I know when you guys come to our red carpet, um, the whole thing just livens up. And why don't you name the? You know, we got I cut you off, or we got you know distracted. <laughs> Uh, but we'll go ahead and name, continue naming the other cosplayers. There's, there's so, there's so, we, we have a lot of people who come in and out. Um, Shaler, who does Baron Von Maul, which is a Darth Maul, he's been he's there from the beginning. Um, Kat, she does, um, oh God, from uh, from the animated. Yeah, Kat does several characters. The we, uh, James and his son do. Uh, various steampunk versions of Lando Calrissian hmm. and, uh, and his so son Chance. And his yeah. son Chance. Which is part of the extended universe. Right. And the beauty of it is, is he, like Tracy said, he was 12 when we started. <laughs> and he was, oh, okay, I'll hang out with Dad and, you know, I'll do this. And he now, was a little kid when he came to our first film festival yes. and that was only, what, this is our third year? Right. And he, he's... And he's, he's a, grown significantly. Yeah, and he's now, a man now. <laughs> and, 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 and as much as his dad is a, you know, a trained uh, actor, yeah. uh, he, he outshines his dad a lot of times and he loves doing that. Well, and James's wife, Noah's mom, she's uh, joined in as a character now a few times. Um, we've got Sarah. She does a pilot ray. Yes. Uh, that's beautiful. Um, Johnny does also does a an X wing pilot. Yes. Um, oh God. And speaking of X wing, for all you Star Wars fans out there who think, oh, steampunk, I might like that. The weekend of April twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth at the Handlery, the Starburners Galaxy carrier services have built a steampunk 22 foot wide wingspan mm. x-wing fighter that's going to be premiered and you can come and sit and be photographed inside an x-ray can you fly it i can't tell you that on in the your air. dream <laughs> in your imagination you can do anything you've been flying for quite a while <laughs> Shh. i always say the only difference between flying and falling is when you hit the ground. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I like that. <laughs> Haven't hit yet. All right. <laughs> I awesome. fly in a city. I've bounced a few times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, we're uh, the beauty also of uh, things like your event, these repeatable events, 
is mm-hmm. being called back. Mm-hmm. And uh, and for us, it's you coming back. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the beauty of coming back is all of us are pretty much scattered about a bit. We're, oh, gosh, Matt and Rebecca. So Chewy Ibaka and oh, yes. Lady Babette Fett. Yes. yes. Oh, God. Now, they see, they, they actually... Mary does a slave Leia, too. And, but she actually predates us. She right. did Lady Babette Fett before Star Wars Steampunk Universe was created. What about, she was at Celebration as Lady Babette Fett. What about... Um, oh, my mind just went blank. That was there last year. Poppy? Oh, Poppy. Yeah, she does an Ahsoka Tano. And her, her um, Treb does... Um, oh, gosh. Cog Bane. Which is also from the am, the animated side of it. So they both do kind of the anim- animated side. And he does it on stilts. Yeah, he'll be on stilts oh. all day. Wow! Yeah. And it's a, it's amazing. And the fact That's that he workout. dances on stilts for kids <laughs> is extraordinary. And on stilts, now think about this: your feet are two and a half feet off the ground. Yes. He stoops down to do photos for with kids. I've seen that. And because of some of the weapon policies, he can't always take his... He's got a real tall walking stick that he has. Some of the weapon policies don't allow him to take that stick. So he doesn't even have that sometimes. That's that's crazy. That's impressive. And he's going up and down stairs. I don't... Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> no. It's crazy. He's, it's impressive. He was born to do that. Just like you were born to do what you do. And I mean more than just the cosplayer part. Just to... Be able to. I mean, I'm I'm very impressed by what you guys do for uh, as a charity, you know, for the kids because you literally. Are it, honestly, it's pretty much only what I dress up for anymore. I don't yeah. I don't usually dress up at cons. I, I'm, I've I never been a huge imagine. fan of dressing up at cons. <laughs> so. Yeah, oh, you changing? You changed their? You know, I mean, it's. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't wear anything at cons either. <laughs> Anything at all? <laughs> yeah, that's what he was insinuating there. That's called like, a birthday suit con. <laughs> He's like, well, I'll wear my Wonder Woman Is that jacket. why you're always being escorted out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, our listeners can't see, but Aaron just turned bright red. <laughs> um, a little bit, just a, just a few minutes here about um, storytelling and why cosplayers should, if you can entice them somehow, to share their stories as films using their smartphones. The crazy thing is that they already are. Right. <laughs> Between taking pictures and, and video clips for their own content, they're already making films. I mean, I, at Celebration, there's yeah. a there's a guy who does, um, he well, he does um, tons of stuff. Um, his name is Chris as well. He does um, uh, Robot Chicken and some other um some other cosplays. He's very tall. You can't miss him. Um, but he does a disco um, stormtrooper. And I remember at Celebration, we made a little video that he posted that kind of went um, viral. viral. It, was a, it, was the, it was a play on uh, Saturday Night Fever where, you know, when he walks by down the street and yeah, he's strutting. Yeah, i video. Yeah. And so I was the girl walking by, you know, oh, like wow. we just did that on the fly. So people are already making these videos. With, you know, they just need to flesh them out a little bit more and turn them into a little bit more of a story as opposed to a vine length clip, you know. It, yeah, it goes I, hand in hand. I get questions from people about like, well, how is that going to help? You know, like, how is that going to hurt? Like, do I have to go go find Star Wars or these characters and, and get licenses and stuff like that? You know, but you don't really do them. The actually with uh, Lucas and Disney lately, they've yeah. finally come to realize that <clears throat> anything that is what I call family friendly. Yeah. That is. Uh, Produced as a video, usually anything from f- 15 oh. seconds to two or three minutes. Yeah. There is a tremendous marketing potential for Lucas and Disney right? because people want to go to Disneyland, play out that mm-hmm. situation, out that character. And uh, there, and Lucasfilms now runs a yearly f- film festival uh, for mm-hmm. those videos. So they're realizing instead of sort of trying to control everything, as long as it's, you know, this family-friendly persona, that they just love the stuff. And it, um, I try at major cons like WonderCon, Comic-Con, to do at least one Dude Vader video. 
because uh, if you think, well, I don't know if I've got the talent to start, don't think about a three to uh, five minute or 15, 20 minute video. Start thinking in the range of eight to 20 seconds. Hmm. My videos that run that long, uh, pretty much every dude video video gets a quarter to a half a million views per well, no. video. And that's just But how do you fun. tell a story in eight, I mean... You gotta, th- you gotta realize, okay, for instance, one of them, uh, the one that went, um, uh, I think almost a million vi- videos, there were six kids dressed up as Jawas at uh, WonderCon two years ago. And so... I said, okay, just dance, just bounce up and down like Jawas, right. as though you're capturing Darth Vader, not Dude Vader. And then we just triple sped it up to where it only ended up eight seconds long, mm-hmm. and we got almost a million views. And then we just had the sounds of them making the noise. So take a part of whatever your big story is and do a short piece, just one scene. Well, we have a limit. We, yeah. we we say one to five minute for short films. Right. And it's different to get views on YouTube because just about anything can go viral on YouTube. Remember the rap with the pizza? On, yes. You know. <laughs> yeah. But um, to get it into a film festival, you know, like ours or anything like that, you need at least a minute, you know, to... And it also kind of pushes people to get a little more creative... Um, with the storytelling part, you know. Um, It's one way to get their foot in the door and for them to realize, I can actually do this. I've got a phone. I have no expertise when it comes to making films, making videos, you know, versus making films. And um, once they accomplish that, it boosts their, um, their confidence. Right. You know? One of the th- uh, suggestions I've always made to people that ask about the Dude Vader videos, yeah. do a video every single day. True. Every day. That gets you over the threshold of confidence as to whether I can do it or not. Yeah. Yeah. And then start stretching out. Storyboard it. Yeah. Make the story. Think about what's going on. At least a beginning, a middle, and an end, really. And and it doesn't have to be in that order either, nope. you know. Um, but at least thinking that way. And before you know it, I mean, to be honest with you, it's harder to tell a story in a short amount of time than it is in a longer. But it's also easier to to captivate people in shorter amount of, in a shorter amount of time because sometimes you lose people in the length of time, which... What you think as a filmmaker, oh, this is great, and I want to share it like this, and I want it like that, and so forth, and you're extending your video out to 20 minutes when it can be told in a five-minute in a five-minute uh, time, you know, period, ends up being having a bigger impact with your audience, and it really has a possibility of turning out better, and you get more views, and you get more people to go from the beginning to the end and watch the whole thing. People have very short attention spans now. Exactly, <laughs> what do they say? Right? Like if, if your video is more than seven minutes long, you forget about it. Nobody's going to watch it. <laughs> yeah. But I, I found that like, you know, a great way to do something like that that also kind of connects it back with the charity stuff is that one of my very favorite things that I kind of am the point person for for Star Wars Steampunk Universe is the Train Like a Martian challenge every year. Oh. And that involves taking videos and posting them. Mm-hmm. And you're doing an activity. So you don't have to think about it. You're, you're told this is the activity you're going to do. And you can make it as creative or as mundane as you want. And you've done that. Oh, yeah. I well, mean, you, every I mean, one of our members can't wait each year for the yeah. challenge. James and Noah are just hilarious. <laughs> because now well, it's yeah, be- they do the father son. Yes, they yeah. do. <laughs> yes, they do. And uh, and they they tease each other yeah. through that too. Oh yeah. my gosh! There's a couple out. T- there's an outtake from last year where they did a where they had to drink a bunch of. You had, one of the challenges was you had to drink a bunch of water during the mm-hmm. day, right? And there was an outtake that they did not post, but I think most of us saw it where Noah drank too much water too fast, and yep, it came back up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it, it, yeah. And the first challenge was at um, the NerdCon, and it was the push-ups. Oh, yeah. oh, that was a different one. That was for the 22 push-up challenge. That was because right. um, 22 veterans a day, on average, commit I did, suicide. I did that one with you in Long Beach. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yes. right. We did it in a circle. Yes. Yeah. Because mm. yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. Aaron also has Comic Con Fit. So that's right. Yeah. 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 Fit blog. Um, James does as well. He do, he has a JG Fitness. Yes. Um, mm. So. Yay, all you, all you active people. Yay, go team you. Um, you see me jumping <laughs> in going, oh, yeah. I, uh, well, and for you people that are thinking about cosplayer, I was 220 pounds when I started Dude Vader. I'm wow. now 160 because you wear a 55-pound outfit yeah. for six, eight hours a week. You'll, tr you'll trim down You in see people in the rural areas uh, where they go for walks and are wearing backpacks with, like, just literally, like, machine parts and rocks and stuff right. on there, you know, just to have that weight to, to, so they can get a really good sweat. That's you the know? mechanic cosplayer. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm like, wow. So I guess if you're, like, a slave somewhere doing hard duty work like in the egyptian days with the rocks or what those yeah, guys were fit right they weren't overweight <laughs> yeah. well they were they're pretty malnourished too but yeah right but yeah but things like the 22 push-up challenge yeah. and train like a martian those are wonderful opportunities to do videos because you know 22 push-ups for 22 days it's 22 days in a row that you have an opportunity to do you a video literally i mean for our listeners you literally can turn any everything is a story you can literally turn every single event in your life, in your day, every day, into a story. Just the act of brushing your teeth can turn into a story, you know. Um, and so definitely if you're a cosplayer, you know, I would definitely do that. How many cosplayers, let's see if we can get through this. How many cosplayers can you name uh, in 30 seconds, say? Okay. Oh, actually... The player or who they play? Um, how about who they play, their characters? Batman, they, Superman, Supergirl. I mean from your from your group. Oh, from our group. Yeah. We've uh, got, well, b and including Sci-Fi Coalition. Is that like Yeah. That? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So we've got. Who don't we have? <laughs> yeah. So we have uh, Captain America in at least 20 different versions. Yeah. Because uh, there's so many different outfits and people love mashup. Mashup is the play most playful part. Of oh, speaking it. of Shonda, actually does a Mandalorian merc right. in, for Star Wars. Steampunk so for sometimes. Star Wars Steampunk Universe, we have Lando Calrissian, C3PO, Darth Vader. We have Han Solo, Han Solo, Leia, uh, um, Bob Chewbacca, Chewbacca, Boba Fett, Ahsoka Bo Tano, um, um, Bane, Bane, yeah. Sabi Sprocket. Um, uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, yeah. uh, Obi -Wan. Luke Skywalker. Um, we have uh, Princess Leia and 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 uh, Princess Ayala. In th they they have so much fun because Ayala's costumes are very close to the steampunk personality. Yeah, and then a lot of characters when Rogue One came out, you see the people in the bar scenes and that they look. Steampunk, right? They're ready yeah. to go, which is fun. Give them some goggles, and all of a sudden they're steampunk <laughs> cosplayers. Pretty much, yeah. And yeah, then Ray. Ray, and then the science fiction coalition. You get the entire Star Wars universe. Uh, the DC, it, Marvel, everything. You know what just gets me? Of all the Star Wars characters after Vader, mm -hmm. Kylo Ren is so popular amongst mm -hmm. kids. That he went viral on, on social media. Yes. You know, because of his dark... And I'll tell you, I think Kyla's going to flip in the last movie. Mm. I think we're going to see... You know, in the first movie, remember they, they were so fearful of going to the dark side and what it was going to do. And, and Obi-Wan saying, you know, I tried to pull Vader back to the light side... And I got a feeling mm. that Ray's going to be the one. Wow. You know? What do you guys... Kylo back? Yeah. What do you guys... And then Ray will go evil. <laughs> Her costume gets darker and everything. Yes, it does. And it's kind of subtle. Kylo loses more of his costume in every... Oh, <laughs> don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, driver... Dri you know, I'm does loving... I'm loving all uh, of his movies now. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> he, he's so much. And remember who he, you know, in Spike Lee's movie. Yeah. You oh, know, Black Klansman. Black Klansman. You know, he's basically, <clears throat> he, he's not the voice of the character. He's the, you know, there's a black man who plays the voice the way, or James Earl Jones plays the voice of the black costume character. And huh. then he goes out and he's the white guy that joins the KKK. It's amazing. I didn't see that movie yet. Oh, it's extraordinary. True story, true too. True story, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah they looked out when they got him doing Kylo. I think he's a brilliant actor and he's he going to be around. the deepest voice I've ever heard. Yeah. Huh. Very deep voice. You know, I'm ready to say it. <laughs> I can't make that voice out, no. Using this podcast to test voices. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you've been to three, uh, well, you're about to hit the third, so you can't count the third one, but the two last years in our film festival, what were your favorite, you know, you weren't there on Saturdays, uh, when we screened the films or anything, but you were there on Sundays. What did you guys, and you were, you were also present for a couple of the, uh, Q and A sessions too with the filmmakers. Yes. What would what would you guys say stood out for you the most that maybe inspired you or moved you or something that you realized maybe? One of the fun things was watching filmmakers fight over who was going to walk with them <laughs> on the red carpet. It was so <laughs> playful. These were mature filmmakers yes. that were like teenage kids. Oh, I want to walk with Princess Leia, yeah, you know? <laughs> that 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 kind of thing. But you know, it was. You know, I have to say something. You have a about very that. famous person over at the, at the elevators over there right now, by the way. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. If you recognize very famous persons, who is it? Sergius. Yeah, Sergius. Sergius Sergio oh, you have a picture with him. Oh, okay. He's of been him? so engaging during this whole thing. He was. Um, he spent so much time with my nephew at Comic Con last year. I've had I've had many conversations with him. Very very cool guy. But wow. he's just over there hanging by the elevator, <laughs> just hanging out. <laughs> well, he was. He went he, around the corner yeah. again. But um, is he coming back to get some ice from the ice <laughs> machine? <laughs> <laughs> well, if he is, we oh, can we can volunteer <laughs> to be his ice man. Rare. Yeah. Um, what but I was going to say. The, what the, I was going to say magic really moment quick. For yeah. Me was the kid, the young filmmakers, oh, when, yeah. when they were telling their stories, there was no uh, hesitation of them expressing their enthusiasm for being filmmakers at that age. The older people, you could tell that they were a little guarded about not sh knowing with what they were going to say was going to be the right thing or the accepted thing. The kids, no. No. It's just like I had an amazing time making this movie. Yeah, it's true. Yes. It's true. And, um, yeah, what I was going to say earlier, when they're kidding each other and stuff like that, you guys weren't there. We did a roundtable podcast. And mind you that most of these filmmakers have never met each other before. Uh, but They we come from all over the world. They do. And we had two Australian filmmakers, mobile filmmakers, that did not know each other who took first prize and third prize last year. And we had this roundtable podcast on Sunday after everything, you know, was done. And they were teasing each other about, because um, Norell had an iPhone, uh, Norell Nash, and Brian Hennings, who won first place, had a, a Samsung. And so he was, they were teasing bye, each other. Bye, bye, they were totally bye. doing that. Apparently they had been doing that throughout the film festival as well Be even before they knew who won they were teasing each other about which phone was better so they formed this really great connection camaraderie you know and um to me that is the thing that really makes you know because you know as a founder you can only imagine you know it's like oh is this perfect is that perfect and all these things and i keep you know in order to not go insane i keep remembering that that it's all about that, the fact that they're going to share stories and connect. You know. can never predict the best part of a film festival until you're there. It's true. It always is it's some amazing magic moment that just comes out of nowhere. 
and the gentleman at the ice machine is yes. allowing me to finish this <laughs> sentence before he pushes the button. You rock. And he's getting thumbs up from everybody around our table. Should we pause for a second? Let him fill up his yeah. ice. <laughs> yes. Go for it. The sound you hear is not my stomach growling from not eating today. You want to borrow my lightsaber? <laughs> clean cut. Clean Very cut clean is. cuts. Oh, I bet, huh? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. I've actually, uh, because I used to be a fencing coach at UCSD, I've actually had been approached to love coach lightsabers now. You know, I now. come from Spain, and... and um, they're, they're big into swords over there oh, in yes. Toledo. Yes. I know some cosplayers that you can use for demonstration purposes, Chris. Oh, good. Mm. Yes. You know, you know Steve Kirk? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 You always say yeah, that so. name whenever it's like, I don't know who that person is, but you now I Brother do. of James. <laughs> the brother of James? T. Kirby? No, he said T. Steve Kirk, and I said the brother oh. of James. James, James T. Kirk. Kirk. Tobias. Okay. Tiberius. 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 It's James Tiberius. Kirk. Yes, you know why I said <laughs> Tobias? Why? <laughs> so that you would pull off your oh. HNG moment. Oh my gosh. <laughs> People do that to me all the time. It's true. Because I do. Like, I'll correct them. I corrected uh, who's the guy from uh, JPL? Uh, the guy with the mohawk and he like, oh, does that start. Bo- Bobak? Uh-huh, yeah. Bird- Are or we back? Like are we oh, back? maybe. I don't know. There's no more ice. Okay. So Anyways. We're back, guys. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hi. So, yeah. No, he did a we're panel, and now. he said the wrong date of first contact, and I shouted. I involuntarily shouted it out from the audience, and got a whole lot of dirty looks. <laughs> but he said the wrong date. Well, um, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap this up. But before I do that, one of the main reasons that um, – that we're doing this podcast outside of what a great opportunity, right, to share your story, um, is because Star Wars Steampunk Universe is one of the sponsors for Film Festival this year. And um, we also have a few other sponsors. Oh, there's another one sitting right here to my left. Um, uh, Hall H Show Podcast. What would you guys say if you had to say there's a slogan about Star Wars Steampunk or a one-line description of what you guys um, are. What would you say uh, that would be for our listeners? I would say we costume to serve. You costume That's our our main objective. We we and and the pitch line that I push to every costumer. You can continue uh, playing. A superhero, or you can become one. I love that. Ooh. What is it? Cosplay for a cause, right? That, that's right. a mic drop right there. <laughs> yeah, right. Just walk away. <laughs> Doof Vader just walks away with his helmet in hand. Um, what would you say is yours, Aaron? Well, we are the voice of independent creators. I don't know where you got the idea of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, we also have, speaking of red carpets, uh, Red Giant, you know who Red Giant is? Um, their slogan is simple tools, giants, well, let me say this better. Simple tools, giant results. Um, simple tools, giant results. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, we also have Film Convert. Um, I don't have a slogan for them, but they do color grading and uh, and film grain. They they're a software company that allows in a them. world that needs color grading. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is turning into a fun game. All right, <laughs> now what would you say about? Um, well, I can tell you, Black Box Global. Uh, they give content creators freedom. Are you ready to look what's inside the black box of Global? <laughs> I don't even know if I'm ready here. I'm kind of <laughs> spooked out. <laughs> um, uh, we have the Hall H Show podcast, and we also have Indiana Filmmakers Network. That pretty much says what they do. There's, they support Indiana filmmakers. Um, and also... In the middle of the country <laughs> in Indiana is a filmmakers conference. That supports you. (laughs) 
But look out for the giant rolling ball. <laughs> of film. Yes. <laughs> Are you jonesing for a film from Indiana? <laughs> uh, and then there's a grip and shield. Don't call me Junior. <laughs> oh, I'm not to make a reference. <laughs> We're just like stealing stuff from each other here in this podcast. Uh, grip and shoot. What would you say about that one? It's not suitable for work. <laughs> Not even going to go there. Um, they are uh, for all you <laughs> creative minds. I know uh, too many grips. <laughs> I'm sorry. Chris turned bright red. <laughs> Dude turned bright That's red. <laughs> this has been a really, really fun podcast. And I'm telling you that the best part of it, for me anyways, I got to hear your story for the first time. Oh, great. You know, so, and it's really nice always to hear it with somebody right in front of you. Well, I'm glad you appreciate it because that's the first time I've ever told it. And, yeah? and what's the most important part of a movie? The story. Oh, I thought it was like a joke, like you were going to say, no, it's something else. Okay, I thought it was. The credits, sitting in the theater, watching, 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 and looking up and saying, see, see line 43, uh, third over from the right? That's me. <laughs> That's true. I, I sit through the, cre- the end credits of a movie every single time. Everybody else in my group can get up and walk out into the lobby, and I will sit through those credits, and they can either wait for me or they can go home, and I'll figure out my own way, way home. But I was raised by a Foley artist, and everybody who worked on that movie deserves to be seen. That's my thing. And by the way, our guardian angel, Pete Vilmar, look at the very last end credit to every one of the last three Star Wars movies. He is the very last end credit. Did wow. you know this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't wait to the end? I do wait to the end. Well, Every I used, time. To, I used to say that when I was in, in college for film and, and all that. And I used to say, watch the people who I used to tell my friends, no, 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 we're staying for the end credits because whoever is staying for the end credits, those are people that worked on the film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. and be sure to get them your business card. Right. <laughs> I want to work in your next film. <laughs> um, or their relatives, you know, right? But it's actually respectful, like, right? If you know there are people that are working on that film, you're not going to walk away. Like, when you go to a film festival, people don't just <laughs> get up and walk away in the middle of the credits. You know, it's kind of rude. And if you go to a Star Wars premiere, one of the most uh, enjoyable things to do is go around and collect all the empty popcorn buckets. Oh. Because then you give them out at charities <laughs> in the, over the next several months. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. But you Wait, do Wait, not get the popcorn, <coughs> just the buckets. Well, they always have like a plastic bucket that they yeah. is kind of a commemorative bucket. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and people leave them behind. I don't know why. Oh, well, they're they're Hollywood types. <laughs> ah. Yeah. yeah. One of the beauties of the premieres of Star Wars movies is they always bring a bunch of the cosplayers to the red carpet. And it's and it's really becoming a nice trend amongst other movies. It's not so just see, Star Wars. guys, see, we're not the only ones. No, it's no. true Hollywood. They what figured we're doing it out for watching you. you. Yeah, they. they Actually, the they're Captain Marvel me. ones have <laughs> really oh, have those pictures have really gone viral. Yeah, because yeah. there's a there's a shot with a actually Lexi is one of she's in Star yes. Wars steampunk. Her yeah. and her and her dad are both in Jim. Yeah, are both in Star Wars. Steve I'd love to have more uh, cosplayers in our film festival, you know, and and we have our cosplay category as well um, because of that, because I want them to come. And I think, you know, we have San Diego Comic Con and, and places like this and stuff, but there's no reason why they can't go to film festivals as far as I'm concerned. I mean, we we totally would open up our doors to them, not just to be hanging out. But to participate and be a part of the, you know, of the filmmakers, the storytellers, you know, just to, just like you guys, we're gonna we're gonna share also for our listeners links to follow you guys, um, and um, and we're gonna share that video that you guys did mm. last year. No problem with that, right? Yeah, I think that, that was, was two years ago. Two yeah. years ago, yeah, that's right. But that was last pretty year. Cool. I couldn't talk. Mm-hmm. All right. I know. I had no voice. I had tonsillitis. We're the voice of mobile film, but Tracy couldn't I know. voice. It's true. <laughs> I had to dub all of our lines. 
<laughs> and and to watch this beautiful face <laughs> with this voice coming out <laughs> was really sad. <laughs> that's a that's a video right there. Yes. <gasps> Mobile film idea. That sounds good to me. <coughs> All right. You can put your hands. I could put my hands behind my back. You can put your hands in front. You know what I think? To they honestly, met we should in have in front a of a uh, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> we should have. Uh, I think I did. I name our our other uh, sponsors. They're gonna get a tribute now. Swords and Circuitry oh, Studios yeah, yeah. and Uncharted Region. Uh, they do multimedia development. And, you know, Neil and Jaina Hallford are the sponsors. They're, they're major sponsors for our film festival last year as well. And um, I got to give a shout out to them because they're also, they've become great friends of all the mobile filmmakers that they, you know, last year was the first year that, that they got to meet these people. Yes. Yeah. And um, and I get to have conversations about them, and they are very impressed with not only with the films. I mean, they, these are professional, you know, uh, creators themselves, um, and they loved all the filmmakers. They they really enjoyed what you guys did as well. But I I was thinking, you know, maybe we should get our San Diego sponsors together to make a little mobile film, maybe for next year or something. I don't want to set it up on the podcast, but just throwing it out there. You I'll know. bring a couple of Dude Vader helmets. We can all just become <laughs> the Dudettes. I was, <laughs> I was just going to say, can Who I be Dude Vader? Vader? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am Dude Vader. <laughs> Nobody can hear Aaron because he's not speaking into the microphone, they, he, but they can hear our reaction. <laughs> just know that he's there. He's there, same like thing. And we're reacting. <laughs> <laughs> and he's finally put his clothes back on. <laughs> and with that, guys, <laughs> we're going to take them off. <laughs> we're gonna, uh, say put them on. Put them on. <laughs> <laughs> say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, <laughs> goodbye everybody. everybody. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> so take off all your clothes. Goodbye, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. And if you're old enough to know what that refers to, you, you know how old Dude Vader is. <laughs> And hey guys, uh, follow these guys. Uh, check out the links on our on our notes. And also, if you can and you'd love to meet some awesome people, come April twenty seventh and twenty eighth to the International Mobile Film Festival in San Diego. Huzzah! Huzzah! Make it to the red carpet extravaganza. And don't forget, the red carpet is in your pocket. And don't let me find your <laughs> lack of enthusiasm disturbing. And no one's going to have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> word. Word. Last. 